Becky. I'm glad you remembered the name. Well, what are you uh, doing here? What's going on? What, 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 what are you well, that's a good question. I really don't know if anything I have left here is worth coming back to get. <laughs> what are you, moving out? <laughs> that's right. What? Hey, hey, hey. Rather, look, don't touch me, all right? I cannot believe that I was so stupid. I mean, I was the perfect little pawn for your little game, wasn't what I? What game? Don't patronize me, Russ. I know all about it. You know, I kept going over and over in my mind on the plane coming down here the past couple of months. And I cannot believe that I trusted you for so long. I mean, I was so naive that I even... I even believed that you and that, that prepubescent little nymphat had nothing going on. Well, I, I don't know what you're talking about. No, know about oh, get what? Get off it! You know as well as I do we're not legally married. What did she say? Oh, come on, Ross. Now, are any of my clothes left here, or did you give them all to the freshman bimbo, what, 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 huh? What are you talking about? Ross, I know that we're not married. The little justice of the peace that you dragged me to at 4 o'clock in the morning had about as much legal authority to issue a bass fishing license than he did to perform a wedding ceremony. <laughs> and who told you that? What, who snitched? Your mother. <laughs> my mother told you that we're not married? No. Your mother told David, and David told me. And you believed her? Her, I believe. David, I believe. You, I believe. Oh, come. Well, now, wait a minute, Beck. Come on. Russ, don't tell me you didn't know about Why this. Why would I lie about something like that? To keep me around. Oh, yeah, right. Well, that, uh, that would have worked real good, huh? Russ, I needed a promise from you. Well, you got it then. And you have it now. Well, it's too late now. Oh, I get it, ha ha. No more promises except maybe Cohen. Well, at least David Cohen has the nerve to be honest. Yeah, well, if you'd have followed me around as blindly as you followed him around, I wouldn't have to be so dishonest. You admit it? Not about this, I don't. Would I have stuck around so much if, uh, if I knew we weren't married and put up with all this? Let me see. Would you have lived in a luxury townhouse? Would you have um, entertained your little nymphette while I paid the bills? I would say yes, Ross. Oh, you haven't paid a bill in your life. You're riding on Cohen's ticket. Well, you're not anymore. Because as soon as I get back to New York, I'm going to have him sell this place. But... In the meantime, put your little name on the mailbox, okay? My treat. Hey, you're not leaving Yes, me. I am leaving you. Well, I'll, I'll just go to New York. <laughs> if you dare come near me, I will call Cohen. He will call the hotel guards mm. and we'll call the state militia. Yeah, we well, I'm that. sure that Cohen will take care of everything. And I do emphasize everything. Just to set the record straight, I did not sleep with him. Oh, oh, oh gee, excuse me. I do feel guilty now. <laughs> oh, boy. No, you can't feel guilty. You didn't feel guilty when you slept with me behind Lori's back, and you don't feel guilty now with little Sheila, do you? You know what I felt guilty, Becky? Yeah, what? When you lost our baby. When you were huddled up on the floor, losing the one thing that could have kept us together. I felt guilt because I couldn't uh, be good enough to bring a kid into this world. I wasn't important enough for you to give up this career of yours for stinking lousy rot nine months. You know, I, I used to worry about, you know, being woken up at night by the kid crying and everything, having to change his diapers, you know, or feed it or something. But you know what keeps me awake night now, Beck, huh? You know what it is? It's the silence that wakes me up now, the silence, Beck. Yeah, well, I have to live with that, too. Look, while you're thinking about, um... Uh all the things that you've lost. Think about me. And when you're with Sheila, and when you're making love to Sheila, think about how, think about how I used to touch you. And think about the, the things that only I could give you, okay? Because you lost something of your own, Russ. And you're not going to get it back.
want to quiz me on the page numbers? I think I've got this whole thing memorized. There is a newsstand on the first floor. And there's the Greenbrier restaurant down the road. Not, what do you say? Not now, Nancy. Well, Charles, we've seen Dr. Greeley and we heard what he had to say, so why don't we go discuss it over dinner? You make it sound like a business problem. Well, Charles, the ugly truth of it is that's what it is. Nancy, if I feel more comfortable here being near Miriam, this is where I'm going to stay. D do you want the car keys? No, no, I, I want to be with you. I'm, I'm sorry. Besides, something may happen, and if Miriam does come out of her coma, I want to be here. Charles, look, I, I appreciate your optimism, but, you know, we have to face reality. You can't believe the horror stories you hear about the medical institutions. I mean, they're, they're specially equipped to handle this kind of problem. I know. I've heard Dr. Greeley's opinions. Yeah, but did you listen to him? I mean, are you afraid that it's too expensive? It can't cost more than this place. Money is the last thing on my mind right now. I know you want what's best for Miriam. I just don't want to talk about it, Nancy. Well, neither do I. But what's best for Miriam is a well-qualified and completely dependable me medical facility. But Miriam is more accessible here, and I think this hospital is qualified enough. But they're responsible for the mess she's in. And what do you mean being accessible? I mean, how grateful can Miriam be? She's practically dead in there, Charles. Now, I don't mean by medical definition of what's dead or alive. I just mean that the, the person that we once knew as Miriam may never be there. You're being morbid. Uh, the situation is morbid, Charles. I'm just being honest. Well, then keep your diagnosis to yourself, will you? I need quiet. That's the reason I don't want to go home, and I don't want to go out to dinner with everything I have on my mind. Charles, you don't look well. And you know, I practically had a heart attack myself when I saw you clutching your chest yesterday. Oh, so now you'd like to put me away, too. Charles, that's not kind at all. I'm sorry, Nancy, but you really are diagnosing a great many people in situations. And I just don't need it now. From my doctors, I can get advice and consolation from my friends. But from you, I need quiet encouragement as only you can give it. Is that what the woman in your life used to give? Helen was very good at it. And I'm sure you can rise to the example. Now look, Gil, you're not going to talk me out of this project, and especially in midstream. Now, what's the matter with you? Nothing. Okay, I just want what's best for Prescott development. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't see it that oh, way. Last gosh. month you were working at the office complex at Oakwood. This month you're at some dumpy little clinic, and you don't like it. Two giant steps backwards, right? Well, you know, any of our head foremen could have handled that job, even the less experienced. <laughs> less experienced? How long you been a head foreman? Eight months? I've been doing a good job. Yes, you have, and I wasn't saying otherwise by assigning you that job. Well, then why can't I do a good job on a multi-million dollar contract instead of on some medical shack on a back alley? Because, I'll tell you why, dollars don't count. That clinic is going to heal bodies and save lives. Now, don't you want to be part of something oh. like that? Yeah, come on in, it's open. Oh, maybe I should come back. No, Don. I was just getting the lead. All right. Hey, well, I see you're on time. That's a good sign. Oh, I got better news than that. I haven't had a drink since I got out. Ah, that sounds good. Willpower, nothing more. Well, now, wait a minute. I was praying. Well, fine. I can take everything I can get. <laughs> How are you feeling? Oh, great. <laughs> great. Great. Dom. Oh, well, a little shaky, but I'll be okay. I think it's more nerves than anything else. What with Don and all, you know. I was going to ask you about that. You found a lawyer yet? I'm working on it. They can't take her from me. I won't let them. Well, you present yourself as a sober, competent father, and I'm sure they won't. One more thing you got to do. Yeah, name it. Drive by the Cummings and fix the door. Oh, hey, Jason, I don't think they want to see me again. They'll probably call the cops as soon as I pull up. I'll... Oh, I know Liz and Jeff. Why, nothing would please them more than to make your friendship. Well, listen, um, maybe I'll have a little spare time in a, in a while. I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm going to an AA meeting uh, over at the Civic Center. Well, that's great. Yes. Then the door and your relationship with the Cummings, and I'll know that you're sincere. Yes. So you're not married? We never were. The Justice of the Peace didn't have uh, the legal authority or something. I don't know. I'm not sure. So what are you and Russ going to do now? Set up another wedding? No. Oh, but that'd be great, Becky. Then I'd finally Lori, have a chance. Russ and I are just going to go our separate ways. 
Why? Just because of this? No, not just because of this. Come on, you know the problems we've been having. But Becky, you've seen the worst. And you've come through it together. Yes, I'm together. We meet about every other week to say how much we distrust each other. Becky, there's more to it than that. You're right. There's uh, my career, there's this new little pet of his, there's his mother. Becky, there's... I meant your love, which is more real than any license. You know be. something, Lori? I wish that I had had or experienced half of the love that people seem to think Russ and I have or had. And still have. And Becky, some legal loophole's not going to be able to take that love away. Lori, do you know what he was doing? I had my suspicions. Lori, the little blonde freshman, I mean, she's so cute you could hide your spare change in her dimples. She was sleeping with him. They were practically living together. Now, come on, you, someone with your beliefs can't accept that. But, Becky, there's another side to my beliefs. I'm not condoning what Russ did. But, Becky, on the other hand, his wife was not there. True. She was in New York saying no to the come-ons of her manager. And is she still going to be saying no? I really don't see what that has to do with anything now. Becky! You're almost acting as if this is the break you've been waiting fine, Lori, for. Fine, you don't, you don't care that Russ was cheating on me. How about the fact that he knew we were not married? Oh, come on, Becky. Did he admit that? Of course he didn't admit it. He's Russ. Lori, why can't you ever see my side on anything? Becky, I do. Every time I've talked to Russ, I've tried to explain to him your feelings and your point really? of view. Really? How do you know what they are? You never listen to me. Becky, that's not true. Your feelings for Russ are real. Emotionally, physically, and spiritually. And now you're trying to pretend that it's all over. And Becky, I can't pretend that that's all right. Lori, I'm glad for you and I'm glad for your marriage. I hope that everything works out just fine for you. Just keep pretending you know all the answers, okay, kid? Becky, you run, but you can't hide. That's cute. Where'd you pick that one up? Modern bride or good housekeeping? You've got everything so neatly packaged, Lori. You know, sometimes talking to you is like talking to King James. I'm sorry you feel that way, Becky. I'm sorry you are that way, Lori. Is that... Donna? Oh, Mrs. Cummings, please. I didn't come here to cause trouble. Liz, what's wrong with... I came to... Fix your door and talk to my daughter. Are you sober? Well, I can fix the door. I have everything I need. Please. It's all right. Donna? Don't worry. It, it's your daddy. He just wants to talk to you. Uh, I'll go get her. Guess the door's not as bad as I thought it'd be. You uh, uh, gave us quite a scare last night. Mr. Cummings, I'm not proud of what I did. I'm only... Donna, I'm, I, I want to talk to you. We'll, uh, wait in the other room. Yeah. Well, uh, listen, before you go, I just want to... What I did here, uh, I hope I can make it up to you. All we ask is apology. I'm sorry. Very sorry. And I mean that. Well, we forgive you. I don't. Come on, Donna. Don't make this hard on me. They might buy this, but I've seen it before. Look, I'm serious. I am sorry. So, you've been off the booze for two whole days, and now you're going to tell me that everything's going to turn around. In time, I'm hoping that it will. And until then, you want me to come back and take care of you? You're my daughter. You belong with me. I belong with a father, and there was never one at the house I lived in. Yeah, well, we can talk about that later, but for now, I just want you to know that I'm sorry. You know, those words don't come easy to me. Twice in one night's my limit, as a matter of fact, you know. You don't have any limits. You just go to your drop. That's how you handle everything. You just drink until you pass out. I want to go fix the door. Dad, I'm sorry, too. Oh, hey. That's a start, isn't it? We're both on the right track, right? Dinner monitor, can you pass inspection? Nope. Oh, it's a quarter to seven. And I'm ready for bed. You wouldn't send your child away hungry. No, but I would send him to pick up some fried chicken. Out oh, a snack. Why are you so tired? Oh, between Miriam and Nancy, 
My new job, the new hospital wing, Lester. Okay, I got the message. Where's the caramel corn? Not for dinner, Peter. It's quick energy. Yeah, too quick. Your blood sugar. Oh, please. Deprive me of a home-cooked dinner and then, then give me a speech on good eating habits? Have you seen Jill? No. Not since she moved over with her mother. Mm. Yeah, I wonder if she's getting a good dinner. Mr. Prescott. Jason. Peter. Hey, Terry. Yeah, I hope you're not here for leftovers. Oh, Peter. <laughs> no, strictly business. Say, whose dog is that? Oh, it's the Hummels. And he's harmless. He only bites people over 5'10". Great, I'll pet him on my knees. <laughs> <laughs> how are you? I'm Bush. Listen, have a seat. Oh, thank you. Uh, I have to make a phone call. Oh, well, I hope you're not too tired. I brought these cost estimates, and I thought you might just give them the once-over. Oh, listen, could it wait? I can do them this weekend. Oh, that'll be fine. See, it's just an amended list, and the only thing that changes are the inflated prices. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> We're mm -hmm. still under budget. How come you're so tired? Well, some emotional, um, well, what's the right word? Challenges? Yeah, the perfect word, and professional pressures. But I'm fine, really, oh. and I'm uh, looking forward to this weekend. Uh, I... I don't smell dinner. I didn't cook dinner. Well, I'll buy it. Oh, no, no, really. I insist, I insist. Now, come along here. It's nothing fancy, just a little pizza. I'm very big at Lorenzo's. Oh. You see, they got a lot of waitresses there that like the mother bachelors like me. <laughs> no, I really don't think I should. I... Well, now that you've freed me from my obligation, I can do it out of the goodness of my heart. <laughs> hey, Peter, come on, we're going out to dinner. Peter, you hear me? You guys going out? Yeah. Uh, yeah, to Lorenzo's for pizza. Yeah, come on. Well, I called Gary. We're going for a burger. Ah, looks like it's just the two of us. Mm -hmm. Who is it? Your ex-father-in-law. I'm surprised you're still here. I missed my plane. Taking the first one out tomorrow. Uh -huh. Would you like to step out into my hallway? <laughs> Come in. Well, I guess Cohen is taking care of all of this, huh? Look, Vince, if you're here to talk down Cohen or my career or my relationship with Russ... You, you know, have no to... relationship with Russ for me to talk down, do you? Thank you for realizing that. You know, it, I'm a little angry at myself. When you've seen as much as I have, you begin to get a little cocky. You begin to think you can't be fooled. What you think is real has to be real, and what you see as false is just as easily discerned now. What you and Russ had, I thought was real. So did I. But... It doesn't have to be irretrievable, Becky. I don't for one minute believe that some stranger's legal idiocy has broken up your marriage. Vince, it's just water under the bridge, No, okay? it's not, Becky. Did Russ send you here? No, he practically ordered me not to come. Now, why? Do you wish that he had? No! I know what you're thinking. Oh, what's that? You're thinking that I'm using this like, like a mind game to see how much Russ loves me. Well, you're wrong. Vince, I just took a nap and... I mean, I slept so quietly. For the first time, I mean, there, there was no tension. There was no knots in my stomach. And, and for the first time since that fake wedding, I didn't have to empathize. I didn't have to rationalize. And I didn't have to sympathize with uh, anybody. Uh, well, I remember it differently. The tension started after summer wind, not with the wedding. No, that's wrong. As soon as I started to pursue a career that was fulfilling for me, Russ, I caused problems. What about Carrie? You can have her. I don't... You know this is her victory. You know that, Becky. Vince, come on. Don't pit me against her. It won't work anymore. I mean, didn't you hear what I said? I said that I'm free. All right, Becky. I didn't come here to taunt you. I thought maybe if your marriage was salvageable, it's then maybe not. I could... It never was. All right. Come here. Now, you know I love you as much as a father ever loved a daughter. When I heard about this, I felt like my own child had been torn from my family. Let me tell you about freedom. My parting words of wisdom. <laughs> when someone is married and has responsibilities, they're free to love and to provide. But when they have no responsibilities, someone who looks free 
is often trapped by their own autonomy. You cut your little boat free of its anchor and, baby, you become a prisoner of the tide. I'm going to miss you. Miriam? Miriam? Something's happened. We've got a cold red. Yes, sir. Hard to stop. Out of the room, Mr. Carpenter. But what? Out now! Miriam?